what should be done in order to instill the child the act of writing. And to be a young writer, what are the uh, necessary elements or what are the requisite uh, tools that is necessary to build up your writer's key inside of you? Other challenges confronting right, young writers, uh, what needs to be done, what steps should be followed to sustain the interest of writing in a child. Uh, we've got our guest right here in the studio is Emmanuel. Zochiku, aka King of Public Speaking, is also a business consultant and founder of Global Influencer Network Africa. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on today. Thank you for having me. Okay, quickly, let's start from this way. Writing, is it inborn or it can be acquired? All oh, right. Talk about writing. Um, it can be in both ways. Okay. Right? It can be inborn and actually acquire it. Okay. Right? Because I believe that you can actually do anything. I was listening to one celebrity last night and she was like, I can do anything, you know. So talking about uh, writing as an inborn skill, um, every child has something inside of them. Okay. Right. So first we have to look at okay, this child is he really interested in writing. And there are some kind of traits anyway, because um, I have I have a friend who has a child that's always drawing, like this guy is just good at it, right? Now, if this guy can develop it, he's going to be super good. So I think the first thing is that the child should be, uh, you should see the child writing every time and, you know, be playing with stuff like that. So that's the first thing. And then talking about developing it, yeah, it's very, very possible for you to develop it. All you need to do is that you have someone that will mentor you in that aspect. Or maybe you decide to take a course or something and do that so you can start from there. Okay, without anyone uh, developing the interest of writing in you, can they just only grow, even just like going through school and you have the interest and you build it up? Yeah, you can actually build it up, but I don't think it's something you can do all alone. Okay. Because there's something we call talent, right? Talent is something you're naturally good at. Like, okay, for example, I'm good at public speaking. But the fact that I'm good at public speaking does not mean it's just okay. Right, I, I define there are six levels of capacity, right, and the least level is talent. Okay. There's some people that say, I'm a talent to profit coach. And I'm like, what? You are making this person to operate at the lowest level, right? Now, the next level after talent is called skill. Skill is when you've actually taken a course, right, yes. to refine your talent. Okay. So we say that skill is talent that went to school. Okay. Right. And then the next level is what we call competence. Now you're taking a course. Now talking about taking a course, it's not necessarily have to be um, you going to university and stuff like that. Right. You can pay for a coaching program, you can attend webinars and all of that. And then so competence is you taking what you've learned, right? Shaping your skills. So the next and level. then you practicing it. Right. You not practice over time. There are some people who take courses acquire some skills you know to practice it's just mm. dormant right? Mm. right and then you now move to the next level which is what we call the expertise that's why anything you want to do or advice you start from that very level expertise is you your competence towards positive results okay like you've practiced over time and now you're not getting positive results whether it's for yourself or for clients or for other people right so i, I think writing is a skill that can be developed so you develop to the level of expertise, then you can actually let the world know what you do. Then you cannot move to authority, writing books, and then move to institution. Now, a level of institution you don't have to. Now, authority is you, you're not being recognized yes. and rewarded. You're winning awards and you know, calling for certain agreements, come and lecture, and all of that stuff. Okay. Then institution is where you go to a point where you don't bother about competition. Mm. In fact, the competition should bother about you, right? You're so good that you cannot be mm. right? So. Yeah, yeah, the word press. Okay, you just made mention of the levels that should be attained. Well, if you actually want to succeed, whether in writing or an aspect of life, can one of those levels, can it be skipped? Let's say, for instance, uh, you move away from your talent. You don't even know what is your talent. You don't know what you are inside of you, and now you want to acquire a skill. Can't one be skipped for the other to move to the next level? No, sure, sure, you can. The main thing is for you to keep. You decide that this is what I want to do. Okay. Right now, it's not about just the talent because there are some people who are talented, but those who have decided they're not naturally good at it. But mm. they just, they just, you can decide to be passionate about something, right? So you decide to be passionate about it and you give your all 
So your passion is it not tied to your talent? Your passion, no, it's not necessarily have to be tied to my talent. What, what you crave for? What's in love? Yeah, what's you have the talent embedded in you. You have a talent embedded in you. I'm talking about the subject of talent. It's actually another sermon. Okay. Right? We're talking about what you love. And there are so many factors to that. Okay. Right? I, I, I have a program on that where I talk about discovery to profitability. Right? That's why I tell my story on how I discovered myself. At a point, I was not profitable. But how you can do that, I'm going to search mistakes. So okay. I think that you can actually um, develop passion for something without it being your talent. And then you come very good at it. So you practice all the time and you know, yeah. Okay. Okay, talking about writing, what can one focus on if you intend to be a good writer? Um, I think you should uh, focus on developing yourself all the time. But before you go into writing, the first thing you should look at is a uh, niche selection. Right? And yes, you have to know okay, what area do I want to actually write? Okay. Can't just say okay, I just want to write. I start writing anything. People should know you that that you're you're good at this. You're established an authority. Not when you come here, come here, writing on the corner. Are you writing for businesses? Okay. Are you into fiction, non-fiction, and there are so many niches. So that's the first thing you have to consider before you go into writing, so that you can actually uh, take all courses in that same area. Put out your content and all of that. So people recommend that. Okay, with the mention finance, speak to someone that for businesses, they should mention it. Okay. Well, is it possible for you to be educated on a license to be able to rise effectively and efficiently? Yes, yes. You have to learn that from those who are already professionals, those who you look up to, role models, or mentors, and even really close as well. Right? All these things we actually help to become the very best and understand. Okay. okay. You've, You've also a, a book, book and also you are writing another one. Sure. What gave you the inspiration? Because we've had a number of stories where people say, I just have the imagination of the third, and I think that I should put into writing. What actually gave you the inspiration? Um, first, I understand the fact that there are a lot of people who are still behind who will not see the light if I don't put myself into writing. Mm. Right, and that, I think that's the major right like, for me. Right, there are a lot of people, and, and that's the truth. Right, so that's my that's, that's the first uh, motivation for me. And then another thing is that I look at the fact that in the marketplace, there are people who lack some kind of information because whatever you want to write should inform, educate, um, they say, uh, entertain, entertain, and then I add the last one, transform. Mm. Yes, you should be able to transform the life. Whatever. Whatever. Yes. So, me knowing that, okay, this is what I want to write on, and then I look into the market, okay, what are the people that need? I'm talking about the market. I was just talking about financial. Right I need to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> but the goal is not the money anyway. Okay. Right? But you still need to look at that. Except you've made some money. For example, I'm going to tell how to look at the market goes to write. Except you want to make money. Yeah, it's time to something. But if you're just starting out, you have to look at that, right? Okay. But there are three things you should look at for. Number one is that you're making impact in the life of people. Number two is that um, you are growing your influence. People are getting to know you and all this stuff, and you are you are establishing an authority. So that's in, uh, impact, influence, and probably the last one is the market. So before you go out there and write, do we have a ready market for this? Okay. Now, when I first read my group last year, uh, I, I tried to get it one, see how I can print and stuff like that, make it quite a And the last two years, the first thing I have to look at for is the market. Like, is it ready? There are some people that print a thousand books and it's just up and down. So you have to look at, is this something people really need? So sometimes you have to look beyond just what you love and look at what the people need. If it's just about what you love, I, I, I think you're going to eat your book. Mm. Right, except you made money or you want an engine. You okay. don't care, you can just distribute. But if you want to make money, look at the market. Who, okay, the first question is what is this particular writing? What problem is this solving? First question, right? Secondly, is who are the people facing this problem? They write about are they uh, kids, teenagers, adults, working class, you know, just where you are. And the next is where can I find them? How do I reach out to them? Okay. Okay. Uh, for uh, the school of thoughts that think that imagination or uh, 
realistic situation says, and it's like a hot cake, what will you say on that part, riding on such situational events? You're talking about um, imagination, I think. Yes. Um, it's actually a very, very, very interesting one. We imagine different things. But then you, after you imagination, you look people and then you ask yourself, okay, what's up with this? Mm. Is it just, because there's something you just imagine and yeah, it's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to make you part and all that stuff. So that is something you still have to consider when you want to write what's in your head. Okay. Yeah. Are there challenges so when writing, writing a book? You've been there. How was it like? Okay. Are there challenges? Yeah, there are challenges. Distractions, difficulties. I think there's something you call the writer's block. Okay. The writer's block, or the law block, is right? Mm. Block in your way, stuff like that. Now, the writer's block is, okay, you're writing and you go to a point where you're empty. You're not saying nothing, nothing there. there. Nothing there. No, what is the next step to take? I think to so actually um, remove that block from your way, the first thing, or the middle thing that I have, I'm doing right now, which is working for me, is to have an outline, right? Because I teach people today on how to write a book in seven years. And most of my students. How does it that here? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if I want to write it in four hours, I can do that. Anyway, I'm But the thing is, you need to have an outline. Are you talking about like five pages of book? What? <laughs> well, like, even if it's a hundred pages, when I'm so confident that something like I can do anything, right? But the thing is, I've come up with a strategy that can help you to write a book. And most of my students have this year books in four days. Now the thing is, before you start, that is where I talk about that. I finish a book before I start writing. Mm. I have not even penned nothing down, but I have finished everything. You conceptualize it, you yes. it. Have an outline. Okay. okay. What is the title of your book? I mean, what is the subject you want to focus on? Right? The next thing is, okay, what are the subtitles? What are the things that you need okay. from the beginning to the end? It's simple. Mm. Introduction. Before you finish your book, I just gave you a preview of the That is not. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, our challenge is talking about if you want to sell, mm. right? Those days, what I used to think was, I used to print it. God, the man told me the amount I was to print a thousand copies. I'm like, God, the ratio of that amount to my account balance was zero to hundred. Mm. Like, what? But I now this. I know better. What I mean is, you don't necessarily have to print your books before you actually make your money. In fact, you don't have to drop a dime, not one error, if you want to make money for your book. Seriously. Without, you can, now look at it. The average African, I discovered something about that, the average African may not have air time to call, may not have um, money accounts, but they have data. Yes. That's just enough. Yes. You understand this, you're good. All you need to do, okay, fine. You're reading your book and it's maybe it's in PDF format or something. You're cool, right? The next thing is, okay, two weeks time, I want to launch my book first online. So you can ask someone if he wants to print it. And guess what? Printing, I don't see any printing is fine. Let me not force it. It's perfectly okay. okay. But you can actually reach out to more people without printing. On the net. Come on. Right? And then you can sell to people from different parts of the world. We have the Amazon. Okay. You can upload your book in Amazon for free. But well, you still need to have that knowledge. We have a number of questions. Make research. That's why we have data. Go and use to make that research. It's very simple. Right? Now, before we talk about the Amazon, I'm talking about you launching by yourself. Now, okay, there is an application called Canva, right? This application needs to um, design some kind of stuff. You see some templates there for fires. All you need to do is to edit. it. You don't need to become a professional graphic designer. Canva. Yes, Canva app. It's, it's, it's a free app, so go ahead and do it. And I think I'll get that from you. Okay, talking about encouraging, encouraging young writers, writers, I've come across, across a number of young stars okay. having the flair to write. How easily will it be for them? How can the society and those that have written books, how can they be a source of inspiration to the young writers? Now, what you're writing about, you're talking about how the society can actually help them. Yes. Um, I think your content should be top notch. It should be there. I, I got a book, I don't know how I came across that book, and everything in that book is just quotes. But, I mean, what, what am I using that for? Everything from page one to So I can't see that I'm encouraging, I want to give an award, I want to call it to come and I want to give some. No, no, no. You're just telling me I can get to quote anywhere. Okay. So the content of what you're writing, that's why whatever you're writing, you should try and be sure that you're, 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 
this session I'll be writing. Right? So when you do that, you're going to be recognized. For example, I won an award for my first book. Okay. That is because the content was top. What was the title? How to create the future of your dreams. Future of your dreams. So I moved from the school doing that book to profitability. Okay. And then I used to story and all that about my story and stuff like that. So I think your your content should be of quality. You should just there should be something unique about you, about your writing, about your for example I speak and like all these guys. So I just want to and apart from that I, I also read too. Okay, yes, so we are going so there. Reading really is part of it. Oh, we are going there, right? Mm -hmm. Or should I continue? You can continue. <laughs> so, reading really is part of it. You, you get inspiration from reading. Really. You get inspiration from listening to programs like this. You know, in short, you tell them before this, uh, some churches do that and say, please uh, pray to God that God should um, give you that particular word that is for you. Mm. Uh, each time you are reading, right, always have the mindset, I want to get a word. Each time you're listening to a word in a program like this, a conference, what is that word for me? If you can actually pay attention to that. See, a word from a book can birth another book. Mm. A sentence from a book can birth a content that can even affect your influence. Written by another person, but just that one word or one sentence that you cast can actually produce a whole lot of stuff for you. So I think people should pay more attention. They should just um, talk less and listen more when they are reading. Okay. Okay. Uh, from writers like you, nurturing a young writer. Okay. Are possible? Uh, what are the strategies that need to be put in place? Mm, first, I, I think um, someone was telling me that uh, this friend of ours that is just passing out and she's doing a lot of stuff that she's not very confused. Now there is there is a an opportunity for clarity, but clarity is not something that comes just like that once. Right, it gets clear as to what she did every time. Which people taps to them as well. Yeah. As your goal. So the thing is, I have to present, okay, you want to learn writing and all that stuff. Okay, but now there are different issues. Which of these ones can you actually deal with easily? Okay. So you don't have to start with something that is very difficult for you. Right, so choose when you've chosen, then I say, okay, fine, the next thing is for you to start practicing. And I give you some strategy that can help you to practice it. You have to be consistent as well, right? Because even the best of the best, they practice. And I tell people that, and I teach people about this, and I tell them, you should practice whenever you want to go, before you go to sleep. Like, yeah, practice all the time. Because the, the practice, they say, makes a work. Perfect. Uh, okay, I, I think I disagree with that. Uh, it makes it best. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, practice does not make perfect, does not make perfection. Mm -hmm. Practice makes it Okay. You can actually, your good can be better, right? Your better can be best, and you can better your best. So, even the best speakers, the best writers, they still practice. So, as you come up, it's like, what? This is so different from what you did some years ago. Like, you, a news, your, your, you should be evolving. Growth. Right? So, you should be evolving for that. So, I think that's what we should do. Okay. okay, okay, this is what was wrapping up on our segment of Focus on education, education this morning as we uh, giving the words to young writers this morning. You have the flair of writing or you have the interest in writing. There are steps that you should follow, build on your talents and also uh, have the competence, build on it and become an expert on that art. And so that's it, all right, this morning. Remember, you don't need to publish a book uh, physically before you become an author of a book. You can't do that online, just like uh, guests have spoken, and you will always reap the benefit financially when it comes to hard work. We'd like to say a big thanks, especially to our guests this morning. Emmanuel Zochuku, aka King of Public Speaking, is also a business consultant and founder of Global Influenza Network Africa. Thank you for being our guest this morning. Okay, this is all wrap it up uh, the segment this morning. But don't go anywhere because the sport with sporty crew of Kesena Diamond is right here in the studio. We'll have a great time listening and watching. Años que que viven etapas críticas en el mundo del fútbol, etapas de pobreza futbolística. Bueno, balón que está jugando Armenia, sacó de centro el equipo de casa y ya regala. Buen recital que podemos hablar. Se me ha venido Vertibox ya de repente a la, a la cabeza. Mítico nombre de Alemania.
Vaya salida del portero. Y ahí pide en mano, penalti. Penalti y vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Aparte del penalti, ¿qué más? Yo creo que era muy claro. Y roja. Tarjeta roja, sí. Tarjeta roja. Bueno, pues se le pone el partido muy, muy de cara a Rumanía. Roja y todo a la vez. La salida Pero es horrible. Lo que pasa es que no es Grigorian. Es Malakian. Es Malakian el que hace el penalti. Claro, y expulsado a Rumanía, minuto tres y medio. Y el gol de Bogdan Stanku. 0-1. Se quedaba con cara de circunstancias. Que es el que se cae, pero no, es el que se cae, pero no hace nada. El que corta con la mano derecha evitando el gol en esa primera acción de tras el saque de esquina es Malakian. Engaña perfectamente. Uh, es verdad que, que lo cambiaba, avisó, era que, cambio raro, eso sí, de repente, al final sí. Sí, lo, lo, lo mandó al banquillo. Y este manda el balón al fondo de la portería. Marca el segundo Popa para Romanía. Le puede caer un Popa. Marcó el 0-2. Agujero negro.